People who were told they were going to die soon by a professional, but lived what happened? I was born with a faulty heart valve and replacement wasn't an option. The surgeon didn't want to do the surgery to basically patch the valve but my parents strong-armed him into it. Doctors said I wouldn't survive. I did. Then they said the patch would fail in six weeks. It didn't. Then for my whole childhood they insisted it was going to fail up until I was 16 and a whole panel of cardiologists basically said, well if it ain't broke, don't fix it. They said the valve would probably hold until my body started to break down in my 50 to 60s. I'm 32 now and doing fine. Not me but my husband. He was told he had ALS but it turned out to be benign fasciculation syndrome. He fit the profile of an ALS patient. He's an athletic, young male in his mid-30s. He's had been working out and losing weight when his symptoms worsened. His symptoms were muscle wasting and twitching. It was reasonable to suspect ALS but without testing. He shouldn't have said anything. It was bullshit. The doctor hadn't done any tests but based on his symptoms alone. He said, go home and get life insurance because he'd be dead within a year. Then told him he had to wait three weeks for the test to confirm the diagnosis. We went home and started preparing, looking at assistive technology, making preparations for end-of-life care, and getting our financial house in order for me to handle raising a child on my own. I was pregnant at the time. My water actually broke 15 weeks early while we were in the middle of waiting for the tests. He's fine now. I'm thankful for that every day and I have a special place in my heart for ALS patients and their families. As someone who has lost a loved one to ALS, you really dodged a bullet. Hold your partner tight. I'm so happy you both did not have to experience that disease. So my grandmother was told she was gonna die and given something like a week's notice. Whole family was gathered round her as she did the usual closing ice. Fading out, stopping breathing what I'm assuming to be one of her friends burst in shouting her name and shaking her. And she wakes up and is now living healthily at home. Doctors had no idea what the hell just happened. No don't die! Exclamation mark! Exclamation mark! Exclamation mark! Exclamation mark! Avoid the light! Exclamation mark! Okay! Greater than what I'm assuming to be one of her friends burst in shouting her name and shaking her and she wakes up and is now living healthily at home. That was her guardian angel showing up at the last minute after slacking off for a week. My wife had severe brain swelling due to a virus. I was told that she was going to die and that I needed to say goodbye. So I went into the room. The doctors paused for a moment. And I said goodbye. I told the doctors they did a great job and that I appreciated their help. I woke up the next morning and my wife is talking and responding to everyone in the room monsieur. There were no long-lasting ill effects of the brain damage and she is perfectly normal from a cognitive perspective. She even finished her master's degree. Not sure why but I read I soon by a professional as being told somebody had put out a hit on you. Not the much more obvious a doctor. You idiot reading of the title would have been a more interesting if more niche, thread at least, people who are currently evading assassins what are you doing to avoid your inevitable doom? Posted by a 100% on assassin. My older brother is mentally challenged with other health issues. Many years ago he was hospitalized after one of his conditions worsened with new medication. The doctors sat my mom and I down and told us he would not be leaving the hospital and we wouldn't know what killed him until his brain was on the autopsy table. I remember it word for word. I insisted it was new meds. They treated me like an idiot. Demanded they switch meds back. They did. After a couple weeks he was released. A handful of years ago brother took a turn for worse. With new meds yet again. This time the doctor, in front of him, said he had cancer and asked how aggressive we wanted to be with treatments. I nailed her with all the data I had found on the experimental drug and again demanded that he be taken off them. Told the doctor he doesn't have cancer. 
Turns out he didn't but the experimental drug left him with kidney damage. This is a story I've been told about 100 times because I was too young to remember. I've been told I had gotten very sick when I was about a year old and the doctor said it was the flu. My mother had finally gotten me to sleep and went to nap. And my father went off to work. My dad liked to pop in during the day and thankfully he did. He said he could smell something foul when he entered the house and followed the scent into my room where I was laying quite still but awake in my own bodily fluids. Upon unbuttoning my sleeper he said that I was clammy, more pale than usual, and he could count my ribs. He rushed me to the hospital, without waking my mother, where they told my father that I was in critical condition and likely wouldn't last through the night. 27 years later, I'm still hearing about how horrible my mother was for not staying awake for another 24 hours. Commented a story about this yesterday actually. So I'll copy paste. Had a bad head injury. It was not superficial so I didn't realize how bad it first went to the hospital found out I had. Cracked my skull and air got into my brain. After being told this, they said they are going to rush me to the trauma unit. I asked the doctor if I was going to be alright. He said I was probably going to die then walked out the room Monsieur had no phone or anything at the time was sitting there alone just thinking about everything. I'm all good now and have no negative side effects that I know of. Maybe he was just trying to be fun. Doctors are weird sometimes. I was told I had late stage lymphoma by a nerd doctor. He told me I had 4 to 5 months to live. I had extreme pain in my lower back and upper legs with a lot of swelling in the legs. Over two months I had several tests including a biopsy that showed negative but still had a massive lump near my spine. Turns out wasn't lymphoma but a blood clot that quickly turned into almost half my body clotted due to me missing part of my vascular system is here while in the ICU they gave me too many blood thinners and I almost bleed out. Which is how my great-grandma died. Good times. Had a severe allergic reaction to a famous alcohol and energy drink combo. Was taken to A&E. UK version of her. Where the doctors misdiagnosed it as an asthma attack and put me on a high-dose fentolin nebulizer. I am also allergic to fentolin so that compounded the effect. My heart rate continued to climb and my sats continued to drop. From here the story is secondhand as I was delirious and then unconscious. Apparently they called my mum into the hospital expressly to say goodbye. She is a retired nurse. Took one look at my chart and told the consultant he was a fucking idiot and started turning things off. Much shouting and excitement later security invited her to leave. But they did take me off the drugs and replace them with something I wasn't allergic to. I woke up the next morning with the worst hangover of my life. I was diagnosed with stage 3 bowel cancer at 14. The doctor at the time was not optimistic about the outcome and said maybe a year but I was young and determined to get through it. After a few invasive surgeries and many months undergoing chemotherapy I was in remission. The pain was excruciating and seeing my family deteriorating was emotionally draining but I fought through it. I now have only half 25% of my lower intestine but I'm more alive than I ever was. I learned to cherish the small things. My parents were told twice I was gonna die after a car accident. They were first told I would not make it through the day after car accident due to blood loss and then a week later they were told again I wasn't gonna make it cause I had gotten septic shock. Somehow I managed to stave off death at the time and have some ridiculous scars to show people. Seven years ago doctors gave my husband's grandpa like three months to live. So both grandma and grandpa made their peace and just started living for the day. Not they're about to turn 90 and healthy as a 50 year old. Not me a family friend. Their mother was diagnosed with an operable stage 4 cancer. 4 to 6 months to live. She was and still is a psychotic bat of evil women. 
but her kids, PPL I know, wanted her final months to be happy so reduced their distance, and helped her fulfill wishes and took her her continued abuse. It's been two years. They are actually really pissed she isn't dead yet. Called her doctors to be all WTF. Doctors can't explain it. It's gotten that when we see them it's like mom's still not dead. Exhausted sound of all the PPL who deserve to have longer life expectancy and overcome the odds. It wasn't her. I'm so sorry for your friends. Although, I can't help but wonder if their mom actually had cancer. There's a book called Her Last Death, written by a daughter of a toxic mother. The author went no contact several times throughout her life only to return time and again after being told by the mother, not by a doctor, that she was dying of something. All lies. My sister was told she had a few weeks to live. Then she farted out all of the bad blood. Now she can live. Dot dot dot. I have questions. Can you expand on this? My friend's grandfather was in the hospital with heart failure. Doctors tried to help but concluded that there was nothing else they could do. They told his family to take time to say their goodbyes and start making arrangements because he'd likely pass within the coming days. Well, homie had other plans. His heart suddenly made a huge improvement. They still have no idea what happened or how it happened. But he was given the clear to go home after testing and monitoring. Now, he's more energetic and stronger than he was before being hospitalized. The doctors had written him off because of his age. It's been five years since that happened and he's thriving. I was told I was dying of cancer. By four oncologists. They all went to school together. And they didn't bother to look at the scans, it was fixed in three days of infection pills I was taking for an ear infection. I lost countless friends, family members, and time to something that was fixed without the professionals even trying to fix it. It still messes with my head. And now I am super addicted to pills and booze because I spent so long trying to feel normal. But every time my five-year-old looks at me and smiles, it's all worth it. My uncle had cancer. The doctor told him he had six months to live. He went to a second doctor who was like, oh yeah, we can treat that. He beat the cancer and is still kicking. I had severe depression. Obviously the doctors didn't say I was going to die, but I had a plan. I was at uni and it was the first few days. I was feeling homesick and generally shit that I hadn't made any friends yet. I had resigned myself to forever living alone or not living at all. I said what I needed to say to everyone and was just about to make my way to the kitchen to get the knife in order to cut open my femoral artery when I heard a knock on the door. It was my future husband. Although I didn't know it at the time. Looking scared and alone like a lost puppy. He said he needed to go to the doctors but wanted someone to come with him so he didn't get lost I decided that my death could wait until after I had eaten an entire tub of ice cream monsieur turns out. We had just missed the bus so we decided to walk. The walk itself was quiet and we did in fact get lost but there was a silent bond built between us. That day, I felt for the first time since I'd arrived at uni as though I had someone I could be friends with. It's been a long road to recovery but I now have my own house with my husband and a naughty little dog who I love. I am not quite there yet but I know with him by my side I will grow and fight and I have the strength to do so. I wasn't told I'd die but when I was four my parents were told I'd never read or write or be independent because of sever dyslexia. I'm now 25 and a qualified electrical and instrumentation technician. I've been working for one of the largest pharmaceutical company in the world for the last six years and living independently the same amount of time. Not me but a family member. My grandmother's cousin. Second cousin I think. She had a few things going on at once. Cancer diagnosis to issues with menopause complicating things. And needed to have a hysterectomy as the damage from cancer cells was that bad. My understanding is they went in. Did what they had to and the surgeon saw signs of other polyps and things which he opted to not to do anything about it. That time, 
Sa in her perspective, they did all this work to remove cancer and then he intentionally left cancer. She was not interested in getting further surgeries, as the treatment for cancer is draining enough. She literally just had a surgery. She doesn't want to go for more and tells the surgeon. Surgeon says you have months to live. She tells surgeon to go fuck himself. If it were so dire he should have done something when he was in there. She decides. Fuck it. I got months and I've never been to Alaska. So she went to Alaska. And Arizona. And Brazil. And a whole bunch of places she never got to see. She opted to go vegan. And eventually transitioned over to uncooked fruits and veggies only. She lived for another 10 or so years and saw more of the world in that last decade than in her entire life. Because of that surgeon. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day.